Welcome and welcome back, everybody, to the OK Grognard Show. Today is Monday, October 31st, 2022, 10 a.m. Central, in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Good morning, Sarah. Thanks for popping in today. We are uh, in the midst of going through the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition Dungeon Master's Guide section on Magic Items, Part 19. We knew it was a big section, it was a lot to tackle, and, you know, it just takes as long as it takes, I believe. So that's that's not a bad thing. It's good to, uh, it's good to go through everything, and there's plenty to go through, and that's good. In any event, uh, we've gone over the first table of miscellaneous magic items. There's one of five that we've gone over so far. And we've been going through the descriptions. We did the A's. We did a start on the B's. We've got books today, maybe some boots. And we'll keep going until we finish this table before we jump back over and look at another one but at least at the start we've got ourselves a fine bunch of books to go through today and we'll start with the book of exalted deeds what a wall of text it's like the worst of all magic cards just a huge in fact there is a book of exalted deeds magic card that has less of a wall of text than this this wall here this holy book is sacred to clerics of good alignment reading of the work will require one week but upon completion the good cleric will gain one point of wisdom and experience points sufficient <clears throat> to place him or her exactly halfway into the next level of experience Clerics, neither good nor evil, will lose 20,000 to 80,000 experience points from perusal of the work. Boom. A negative XP total is possible, requiring restoration, but not lowering level below first. Evil clerics will lose one full level, dropping to the lowest possible number of experience points possible to hold the level they will furthermore have to atone by magical means or by offering up 50 percent of everything they gain for two to five adventures losing the appropriate number of experience points as well or gain no further experience fighters who handle or read the book will not be affected though a paladin will feel it to be good Magic users who read it will suffer one, the loss of one point of intelligence unless they save verse magic. And if they do, if they do save, they will lose 2,000 to 20,000 experience points. A thief who handles or reads the work will sustain 5 to 30 hit points of damage and must save versus magic or lose one point of dexterity and have 10% to 60% chance of giving up his or her profession to become a good cleric if wisdom is 15 or higher. Assassins handling or reading the Book of Exalted Deeds will take 5 to 40 hit points of damage and must save versus magic or commit suicide. <laughs> it says it right here. Monks are not harmed by the work, nor can they understand it. Bards are treated as neutral clerics, experience point loss being from bard experience only. Note that, except as indicated above, this writing cannot be distinguished by cover or scansion from any other magic book, librum, librum, tome, etc. It must be perused. This applies to other magical writings detailed hereafter once perused the book vanishes never to be seen again never to be seen again nor can the same player character ever benefit from perusing the like a second time so if you somehow get a hold of a second 
book of exalted deeds forget about it ain't gonna help you again once perused the book management and the same player character nor can the same player character ever benefit now this is not to say that those who've been harmed by this book cannot be harmed again and I guess semantically speaking and we are all creatures of semantics in the gaming world if a thief gives up his or her perfection uh, profession and becomes a cleric if their wisdom is 15 or higher a good cleric I guess it goes without saying that they who have not yet previously benefited could benefit from perusing such a book a second time this, nor can the same player character ever benefit from perusing the like a second time the first time they did not benefit so if they peruse it a second time now as a good cleric they could gain the point of wisdom of course it'll take them a week of reading it so on and so forth but isn't that an amazing magic item it deals more with what it does to people who are not the proper people to be reading it Sarah says makes sense what's learned is learned but brain hurts still hurt <laughs> yeah it's true brain hurts still hurts words of wisdom from someone who is not currently playing a cleric like that little uh, bit of uh, filler artwork in there the little book it's pretty nice and it's someone putting their finger over a fire over a candle flame is that what that looks like book of infinite spells <clears throat> This magical writing bestows a spell use ability upon its possessor. But upon first reading the work, any character not already able to use spells will suffer 5 to 20 hit points of damage and be stunned for 5 to 20 turns. Thereafter, he or she can examine the writing without further harm. The Book of Infinite Spells contains 23 to 30, that's 22 plus a D8 roll, of pages the nature of each page must be determined by random die roll use the following table pretty straightforward table it's percentage dice 1 to 30 it's a blank page 31 to 50 cleric spell 51 to 60 druid spell 61 to 95 magic user spell 96 to 100 illusionist spell if a spell is written on a page roll a d10 for all except magic user spell for which a d12 is rolled to determine the spell level results of 8 to 10 or 10 to 12 indicate a d6 d8 for magic user spells is to be rolled instead when the level is known determine the particular spell by random means also record page contents secretly and do not reveal this information to the holder of the book that is all in caps do not reveal this information to the holder of the book this is supposed to remain secret because they have choices to make we'll talk about that in a second but let's look at those uh, roles again a d10 all except for magic user spells to determine level d10 but if you roll an 8 through 10 then you roll a d6 this is a way of skewing the results to lower level spells ever so slightly it's not huge if you roll a d12 for magic user spell level and you roll a 10 to 12 then you roll a d8 instead of taking the result again skewing it lower but look you can get up to d up to six level with non magic user and up to D uh, level eight for magic user spells even if you have to re-roll it's just a uh, 
slight lowering of the bubble on the bell curve, as it were. Anyway, once a page is turned, it can never be flipped back, i.e. paging through the book is a one-way trip. When the last spell is turned, the book vanishes. The owner of the Book of Infinite Spells can cast the spell to which the book is opened, but once per day only, unless the spell is one which the character would normally be able to cast by reason of class and level, in which case the spell can be cast up to four times per day. So if you're a first level magic user and you get a hold of one of these and you have magic missile in your arsenal already and normally at first level you'd only be able to cast one of them but if you somehow got this book and it was opened to a page that had magic missile on it you could cast your normal one but you could cast an additional four of them so it's pretty powerful if it's any other spell you could cast it once so super powerful the book need not be in the actual presence of the owner in order to empower the spell ability so he or she can store it in a place of safety while adventuring and still cast spells by means of its power each time a spell is cast there is a chance the energy connected to its use will cause the page to magically turn despite all precautions you know putting a big lead weight on top of it so that it doesn't change changes will not stop it the owner will know this and possibly even benefit from the turning by gaining access to a new spell the chance of a page turning are as follows again percentage die roll here 10 percent chance spellcaster employing the spells usable by his or her class or ability let's see this again the chance of a page turning is possible spellcaster employing spells usable by his or her class and or level 10 percent spellcaster using spell foreign to his or her class or level 20 percent non spellcaster using cleric spell 25% non spellcaster using magic user spell 30% chance so it's not a huge percent um, if uh, the spell that's currently open to is one that you can normally cast already uh, being the class you are and uh, level you are then it's only a 10% chance it's going to change. But that can be taken each time. That roll needs to be made each time you cast a spell that you're gaining from the book. If uh, it's a spell that you couldn't normally cast, whether it's of your class or not, and certainly if it's beyond your level, 20% chance it's going to change non-casters using cleric spells make it 25 percent non spellcaster using a magic user spell 30 percent chance so it's not huge but those pages can be flipping every time you cast treat the spell use just as if a scroll were being employed including time of casting spell failure etc this includes uh, the level being that uh, which a uh, scroll can be made dictates what duration range all of that stuff as well and of course spell failure if it's beyond you normally there's a chance the spell fails the higher the spell level or the higher the spell you're casting the tougher it is Book of Vile Darkness. That's some nasty stuff. But here we go. This work of ineffable evil is meat and drink to clerics of that alignment. To fully consume the contents requires one week of reading, 
but when such has been accomplished the evil cleric will gain one point of wisdom and experience and experience points sufficient to place him or her exactly halfway to the next level of experience this is the book of exalted deeds for evil clerics clerics neither good nor evil who read the book will either lose 30 to 120,000 experience points or become evil without benefit from the work there is a 50 percent chance for either good clerics perusing the pages of unspeak of the unspeakable book of vile darkness I always wondered why the word unspeakable exists I guess just for being written down <laughs> of uh, the unspeakable book of violent actors will have to save verse poison or die and if they do not die they must save verse magic or become permanently insane in the latter event even if the save is successful the cleric loses 250,000 experience points less 10,000 for each of his or her points of experience so there's a caveat on this one other characters of good alignment will take five to 30 hit points of damage from handling the tome and if they look inside there is an 80 percent chance a night hag will thereafter come to the character that night and attack non-evil neutral characters will take five to 20 hit points of damage from handling the book and reading its pages will cause them to save versus poison or become evil immediately seeking out an evil cleric to confirm their new alignment check out the book of exalted deed for other details since we just looked at that we won't rehash that however it is worth uh, noting that there are some differences in the ill effects that it can cause to people who are not evil clerics and taking advantage of the uh, benefits of uh, the book of vile darkness nasty nasty thing that it is hey uh we're getting closing in on the 20 minutes and i've been trying to keep these just a little bit shorter and since boots of dancing is next we'll save that and the other boots for the next video and uh oh you know, we got a week we got our weekly game this week so sarah will be seeing you Hope you're ready and excited. It uh, seems like the court and some refugees are all in exile from Smiteborn after a severe zombie attack. Oh, it's... Yeah, yeah, tomorrow's the first, so... Yeah, this is Halloween. Happy Halloween, Sarah. Hope you're having a good time. I hope you've got a plan for our game... You'll have to talk to everybody else and figure out if there's something everyone can do. I know we already discussed this. The uh, family members you have should not have left those drunk guards. Yeah, guarding the tomb entrance. That uh, might have made some changes to some things. Who knows? It's a lot of zombies. Anybody, anybody in front of that tomb entrance might have been overwhelmed by those kind of numbers it would be tough to believe that uh, that that couldn't couldn't happen or wouldn't happen anyway but certainly it's easier to see how it did happen given those circumstances nevertheless big zombie horde wandering around it's Halloween it's a lot of fun dealing with zombies around Halloween so that's kind of nifty not really the plan uh, I don't really plan stuff I kind of randomly roll a lot of circumstances and this is just the weird timing of it that it happened to have all these zombies come out and ruin the harvest festival and the uh, and the uh, play that the group was putting on at halftime at the football match the Icelandic or <laughs> similar to the Icelandic football match anyway it was good to, it was a good time uh, I guess we should drop it cut it out get back to uh, get
get back to what we're doing and uh, pass along my thanks. Hey, how's it going? Long time. Thanks for popping in. I'm afraid you're catching it at the end. But do very much thank you for popping in and checking out the show. I do want to say uh, thanks to everybody who joins in on the fun. And also to remind everybody that the show streams live on Twitch each Monday at 10 a.m. Central. And then it's archived on YouTube. Special thanks to the Patreon supporters, Tom Tullis. Fat Dragon Games, Rick Hershey of Fat Goblin Gangs, Carlos Lysing, Castle Entertainment, Heath Farndon of the Antipod and D20, Dave O'Brien of Four Quacks Games, and as always, Shane Bradley, DM Extraordinaire. This has been the OK Grognard Show from beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Thanks again and bye bye <laughs>